Uh, welcome to the new era in the Tradesman channel, everybody. So we're closed in in here. If you can't tell, we have quite a bit of echo in here now. We're going to have to do something about that. Probably hang some stuff on the walls inside this forge once we get going. But it is a substantial echo and it's probably going to get worse when we wall this end off here. So moving forward, over the last couple of years, you guys have seen me build some things moving towards forging tools a little bit. You haven't really seen... Uh, I've made a couple things on camera, but not a whole lot. So basically, we're at a point right now where we could just start forging. We could just start forging away. We've got a forge set up, our anvil sitting there. We have a gas forge over here. We have an exhaust for the forge, but we're not there yet. Um, I want to get this closed in. This whole area, this two sections right here, is going to end up being an enclosed blacksmith area. Now, some of you over the course of the barn build the last couple of months have seen me started walling this off. You're wondering, why would you do that? Why would you separate them? Hate seeing walls go up in a building this big. Uh, reason being, a couple of reasons. Wintertime, it will heat itself just in the process of forging. A lot of you wonder about insulation in here. I don't need it. You'd be amazed how much heat these forges give off. That gas one right there, even when this was wide open and I used it out here in the wintertime, hotter than hell in this back corner really hot so imagine what it's going to be like when all this is closed in same thing with the coal forge it heats up that area quite well so i'm not too worried about freezing my ass off out here in the winter time not worried about that at all i had somebody mention putting windows in here to let in the natural light i don't want daylight in this area <clears throat> the reason being when you're foraging, you're going to temper, you're going to quench, all that good stuff. You need to be able to see the colors accurately. There is a certain, uh, every heat on steel kind of has its own color. So I'd like to be able to shut the lights off, turn a dim light on, be able to see exactly what my steel's doing. It's a lot easier that way. Plus for me, I mean, face it, I'm a YouTuber. So a lot of times when I'm doing things, a lot of the motivation for doing this or that is based on how I make my videos. I prefer to have light that I can control. If we were outside all the time, it would be different. It'd be perfect. But since we're inside a building, you get a window behind you, you get a lot of washed out light. You could cover it up with a blanket, but it never works completely right. So anyway, there's a the reasoning behind that. So first things up that we have to work on, we've got to frame this wall out here. We'll see that as I can, as I get boards to do it. But I have all the framing material. I actually do have quite a bit to sheathe it in. So we're going to get going on that. We'll try to get some plates up tonight, see how far we can get before, before it's time to go to bed. But uh, anyway, enough of me rambling. Stay tuned. I'll catch you on the other side of it.
we are getting there. Moving right along. And I have just enough screws left to frame this out. And so we'll have to pick more of those up. So we're going to make this, this doorway is going to be six foot eight. Kind of your standard, your standard door, standard door size. Now these pieces right here are six foot six. At least I think they are. I have to double check those. Did I have a snafu? I think I may have. I think I just might have messed that up. No, oh, that's six foot six. That's six foot six. It must be I'm growing. Looked a little short there for a second. Silence everybody who wants to take the bait on that comment. This is not a channel of dick jokes. Unless I happen to be making the dick jokes. You know, it's funny. Every male person on this planet can appreciate a dick joke. My wife's grandfather, she just had another one pass away here. My father-in-law's father passed away when we were on our Griswold family vacation. He's almost 97 years old. I mean, he was just about there. And his wife, she just passed, oh, about a week and a half ago. Same age, just about 97. They were... Just about a month apart in passing. Amazing, amazing people. They hunted, they still uh, were deer hunting, I believe when they were like 92 or 93. Absolutely amazing. They just don't make them like that. He was a World War II vet. Just in, and he was a uh, carpenter. He was an incredible cabinet maker. Just, I mean, he could make anything out of wood. Amazing. But anyway, even at 90-something years old, that guy can still tell a dick joke. <laughs> that is just funny. And he, um, one of his favorite one, and then boy, he cackled, the old Italian guy, old Sicilian. If you can't tell looking at my father-in-law, what island his folks came from. But, um, Anyway, he used to say all the time, he goes, ah, it ain't real long, but it sure is skinny. And he would laugh and laugh. That was funny. You tell that same joke to an eight-year-old boy, and they will laugh and laugh. <laughs> it's just funny. You often wonder if it was like that in days gone by. You know, if people way back when used to have the same sense of humor. I don't know. I thought it was funny. I know some of you probably don't think that, but my sense of humor is so screwed anyway that it doesn't take much to make me laugh. Anything off color, I'm, I'm good. And according to the boy, he was out here for with me for quite a while tonight. According to the boy, uh, Thomas Russell is back in the barn. I haven't seen him in a few, in about a week. 51 and 5 eighths. Let's see if this piece will do it. It better. Oh! Jerk. So there's a channel I've been checking out. A blacksmith that, I tell you what, he built a power hammer 
that blow your friggin' mind. Absolutely beautiful work. It's about as simple as it gets. It's an air hammer. And I am highly impressed. This guy's welding is simply amazing. Absolutely amazing work. Uh, Joshua Delisle, I believe. I'll put a link. I'll put a link to his channel down below. Maybe something some of you guys would like to check out. His work is impeccable. It's some of the cleanest, nicest welds I've ever seen on anything. It's one of the nicest and simplest power hammer designs I've seen yet. It has a small footprint. And it's just beautiful in its simplicity. Simplicity is nice. So if you guys get a moment, you'll check them out. I think you'll like what you see. Boy, I'm already making a mess of my workbench and everything. So we have another wall framed out in here, the final wall for this forge area. Uh, we're doing a wide doorway in there, simply common sense reasons so we can move things in and out. I'm going to have to run some tap cons into the floor to support that bottom plate um, and then that way we can cut we can cut the uh, the door sill out of there so we're not tripping on that bringing things in and out. Doorway opening from the floor to the bottom is uh, 6 foot 8 inches so we'll have plenty of height to move things in and out that's your standard doorway, doorway height in most buildings but yeah there we are. We're in good shape. Uh, boy, it's nice to be doing some of these without a lot of pressure on yourself, if, uh, if that makes any sense. So once we get that framed out, or I should say sheathed, because that'll be the next thing we've got to do, and that won't take long. We're just going to do one-inch boards, whatever I have kicking around. And then on this wall, on the outside wall, we're going to be getting, uh, I've got a bunch of scrap sheet metal. It's not going to look the nicest, but it will function until we can afford to buy some full length sheets to go from the floor up to the uh, top of the third girt. So it'll still leave wood exposed in the top three or four feet of the wall, but these uh, from floor to bottom of the tie beams, 10 feet in here. And it's actually just about 12 feet up to the uh, bottom of the second floor floorboards. Now that uh, plenty of height in here. I'm not worried about sparks going all the way up here and catching the building. Um, we are going to have to wrap these timbers though. I'll have to break some, uh, do some breaking, some sheet metal and wrap around them. And that way we can protect those edges and things like that. And then we'll take some fire rated silicone, the red stuff, and put a bead along. I, I basically, I want metal kind of wrapped around in here. Um, the front of this cab or the front of this this workbench, I'm going to close in. I'm going to frame it out, and we'll put sheet metal doors on it. So we'll have sheet metal going from the floor up to the uh, the top of the workbench. That way, any sparks in there. So when you're forging, you're you're hitting that hot steel. Sometimes you'll get sparks will fly, slag, hot slag will fly all over the place. So we want to avoid that over there. <coughs> That's going to be a lot of our welding area, fabricating area. It's not huge, but I'm not going to have the welder parked in here. I have quite a bit of leads for my welder, really nice long leads. So we're going to park the welder outside of the door, and then when we're welding, I want that door open anyway so we can get the airflow. I also have a huge, um, I have a commercial exhaust fan that's going to go out this sidewall out here. I hate to put it out the sidewall because then you put it under the eave and that's a good place for ice and stuff to just destroy it. So we're going to have to put a little dormer over top of that on the outside just to protect that. Um, that's going to be coming in the barn pretty soon. As soon as I probably, probably about as quick as I get this covered up in here because what I need to do with that is I have to replace bearings on it. So we'll do a video on that. You guys can see how we rebuild those. So. Anyway, 
Thanks for watching, everybody. And like I said, if you get bored, check out Joshua Delisle. He's a, a British guy. Hell of a blacksmith. Amazing power hammer. Something uh, some of you could probably get some inspiration from. So anyway, have a good one, and I'll catch you on the next one.